Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I am going to do a series of gut health rabbit hole podcasts, including today on what are short chain fatty acids. Get rid of this thing on my screen. Short chain fatty acids. We might have been hearing about this a little bit more. So let's go into some information, short chain fatty acids, lots of information out there. Let's read some articles. What are they? Good bacteria in your gut helps support your health in a variety of ways, including short chain fatty acids. It is believed short chain fatty acids may play important roles in keeping you healthy and preventing diseases. So this article talks about how their type short chain fatty acids are a type, obviously, of a fatty acid with less than six carbon atoms. They are produced when the bacteria that live in your intestines ferment fiber. Keynote word there, ferment fiber. fiber. These bacteria and other microorganisms make up your gut microbiome and the gut flora. In the recent years, researchers have been exploring the effects of gut microbiome on our health. They have found that short-chain fatty acids play an important role in health and disease prevention. So if you are a health optimizer, you might want to look at some of your gut health. But we test and not guess using different lab tests that we can order on Rupa Health. There's Genova Diagnostics, GI Map. There's the Gut Zoomer, so we can look into that. But what we test when you do your stool test, you can get a short chain fatty acids levels: acetate, propionate, and butyrate. So I started going down this rabbit hole because a lot of the functional lab tests that we run, I'm not a doctor. I'm not licensed. I'm a practitioner, FDM practitioner and nutritional therapy practitioner where I feel that I'm more of a health investigator researching and putting the missing pieces of health puzzles together for athletes of all levels for people to improve the aging process. And those are just health optimizers. They want to live their best life as they age and be their best self, feel their best self move. So short chain fatty acids start to see this pattern and people having low butyrate production. And then I started going down this rabbit hole. What, what does, what's the role of butyrate? For example, do we need fiber? What type of fiber? So if we go into all this information I've been talking about lately, Dr. Jockers on postbiotics, it's really interesting on what, what are prebiotics, what are probiotics and what are postbiotics and how is this, how is this related to short chain fatty acids making this acetate appropriate butyrate. So we'll kind of go into this in different seminars, webinars, whatever you want to call this rabbit hole videos. So we hear that we don't need fiber in the carnivore space, but I also want to clarify what is fiber. If it's a prebiotic fiber, and I've gone into this on my blog page of listing options for feeding the microbiome with what type of fiber to make these short chain fatty acids, or can you just get butyrate production from food? So dietary fiber says it comes from plant-based foods, fruit, vegetables, beans, legumes. I personally do not like beans, legumes, I know a lot of people when I'm doing their gut health investigation program, they don't do well with a lot of the vegetables as lectins, phytates, oxalates, FODMAPs. So maybe it's fruits that might be, be good for you. I do grain gluten-free myself. I know most people can't do, they can't digest gluten, gliadin and protein or gliadin protein that's in gluten and that can create stress in your gut wall lining, lead to breakdown of your gut wall lining and create leaky gut. So that's in other podcast episodes we've done lately. So 
Fiber isn't considered a nutrient because humans lack the enzymes to digest and absorb fiber. Instead, it promotes regular bowel movements by binding to nutrients and waste products created during digestion and pull them out of the body through stool. But I'm looking at more the fiber to help improve our short chain fatty acids. So the bacteria in the gut can break down and ferment some type of fiber. And this helps promote the good bacteria in the gut and produce short chain fatty acids the body can use. That's what I'm looking at. What can we do to help the bacteria break down and ferment these certain types of fiber, what that fiber looks like and how we can get more improvement and acetate appropriate butyrate prediction and go into why. Because the list, and this isn't a great article, very well health, because a lot of it is questionable, but we want to look at what type of fiber. So we can dive into that different episode, but soluble fiber versus insoluble fiber. And if I take out lectins, oxalates, wheat, grain, all the lectins, we don't want a lot of these. So berries, avocado, like crap, not of that. Nuts, not everyone can do. Cauliflower, this one, potatoes. So this is a bad example, but digestive health benefits of short chain fatty acids. Let's skip ahead. Numerous benefits, digestive health. Here's some of the health benefits. Improve inflammatory bowel disease symptoms. Reduce diarrhea, lower colon cancer risk, help control blood sugar and diabetes, support healthy weight maintenance, protect health of the heart, and there's more research. So recommended fiber is what a lot of people talk about. Getting 30 to 35 grams for males. This says 25, 32 grams for females. Most Americans only eat about 50% of the dietary need. What fiber is good for you to focus right now on the short chain fatty acid production when gut bacteria ferment dietary fiber. The gut bacteria primarily produces these three types. We talked about acetate, butyrate, and propriate, and short chain fatty acids may support health in these different roles. I won't go into it again. So let's go back to where I put all this into my blog page and we want to dive into the short chain fatty acids and how we can identify this in the test. So reviewing short chain fatty acids, the role of them. So we know the three, I'll repeat them now, butyrate, propionate, acetate are microbial metabolites and their availability in the gut and other organs is determined by environmental factors such as the diet and use of antibiotics, which shape the diversity metabolism and the microbiota. Antibiotics kill off all of our good and bad bacteria. Short chain fatty acids regulate the epithelia barrier function as well as the mucosal barrier and systemic immunity by evolutionary conserved process that involved G protein coupled receptor signaling. And the anti inflammatory role of butyrate is what I was looking for. What is the benefit of these short chain fatty acids? How does this have a role in chronic inflammation that we're seeing in the body? So the anti-inflammatory role of butyrate is mediated through direct effects of intestinal epithelial cells, the different types, phagocytes, B cells, plasma, as well as regulatory and effector T cells. Intestinally derived short chain fatty acids also directly and indirectly affect the immunity at the extra intestinal sites, such as liver, lungs, reproductive tract, brain, and have been implicated in a range of disorders as infections, intestinal inflammation, autoimmunity, food allergies, asthma, and responses to cancer therapies. So understanding our microbiome and their interrelationship between the microbiome and the short chain fatty acids and what we're eating, what goes on in our body is pretty fascinating. So looking at more information on short chain fatty acids research continues on and specifically looking at the role of butyrate, how that impacts our gut health and the role in our overall well-being. So microbial short chain fatty acid production. It's essential for gut integrity, 
by regulating the luminal pH, mucus production, and providing fuel for the epithelia cells and effects on the mucosal immune function. Short chain fatty acids also directly modulate host metabolic health through the range of tissue specific mechanisms related to appetite regulation, energy expenditure, glucose homeostasis, and immunomodulation. Increasing microbial short chain fatty acid production, short chain fatty acid production can be considered a health benefit, but data is mainly based on animal studies, whereas well-controlled human studies are limited. So you are your own experiment. What can we do to improve our gut health and our metabolic health? So looking at what you get on your test, I find interesting to look at your own stool test and figure out what are your signs and symptoms and what are your genetics and what are your goals here for your future self. So looking at data, looking at metabolic consequences of elevated gut derived short chain fatty acid production strongly suggests that increasing short chain fatty acid production could be a valuable strategy in preventing GI dysfunction, obesity, and type two diabetes. So that looks at metabolic health. So how else do the short chain fatty acids, the butyrate, for example, help us? Primary energy source for the cells lining the colon, colon sites, and it plays a role in maintaining gut barrier integrity, reducing inflammation and regulating immune function. The mechanism of butyrate involves this interaction with various receptors and pathways within the GI tract. One important mechanism is the role of histone desilicetase, HDH, HDAC inhibitor, which can regulate gene expression and influence cellular processes such as proliferation and differentiation. Butyrate also acts on specific receptors as BPR43 and GPR109A, which are involved in signaling pathways related to inflammation and metabolism. So I'm trying to connect the dots between short chain fatty acid, specifically the butyrate levels, and how this is connected to gut health, inflammation, leaky gut, metabolic health. So another article, short chain fatty acids, mechanism and functional importance in the gut. To review, recent years importance of the gut microbiota in human health has been revealed, highlighting its role as a key component of human physiology. Modern sequencing approaches have allowed for the characterization of the microbiome in healthy individuals and in disease, demonstrating the disturbance of the microbiota or dysbiosis associated with pathological conditions. The microbiota establishes a symbiotic crosstalk with the host. Commensal bat microbes benefit from a nutrient-rich environment providing, provided by the gut and the microbiota produces hundreds of proteins and metabolites that modulate key functions of the host, including nutrient processing, maintenance of energy homeostasis, and immune system development. Many bacteria derive metabolites originate from dietary sources with an important role attributed to metabolites derived, metabolites derived, from bacterial fermentation of dietary fiber. Short chain fatty acids linking host nutrition, you are the host, to intestinal homeostasis maintenance. So adding in specific types of fiber that will help the bacteria create these short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are important fuels for intestinal epithelia cells and regulate your functions through different mechanisms, modulate their proliferation, differentiation, differentiation, and function of subpopulations, different enteroendocrine hormones, cells impacting gut motility and strengthening gut barrier functions, as well as host metabolism. 
recent findings show that short chain fatty acids specifically, particularly butyrate may also have important intestinal and immunomodulatory modulatory functions. So this is a review in the mechanisms and the impact of short chain fatty acids on gut functions and host immunity affecting human health. So that's on a PubMed, look at the link there. So let's go into again, butyrate more specifically. The purpose of butyrate in the body. Let's go through these four things and then how you can increase butyrate levels. Providing energy, butyrate is a significant energy source for the cells lining the colon, contributing to function and maintenance. Number two, maintaining gut barrier integrity. Butyrate helps strengthen the intestinal barrier, which is crucial for preventing the entry of harmful, harmful substances into the bloodstream. Modulating inflammation. Butyrate exhibits anti-inflammatory properties, helping to reduce chronic inflammation helping to reduce inflammation, it says, but I had chronic in the gut and throughout the body. Regulating immune function, butyrate influences immune cell activity and helps maintain a balance between immune tolerance and response. So how can you improve the level butyrate production? Nutrition, dietary fiber, what type of fiber? It's we look at resistant starches, non-digestible carbohydrates that can promote production of butyrate by the gut bacteria. Remember, you're just more eating this fiber to feed your microbiome. So they ferment that food and the byproduct of that fermentation process are butyrate, acetate, and propriate. So these prominent short chain fatty acids found in the human gut. So what can you do? What can you eat to improve that? How do you know if you have enough, you need to do the functional lab test, a GI stool test to find out or else you can just guess and see how you feel. Ideally we spend money. The problem is I wish the lab test for gut test would drop because it is uh, about $400. Probiotics and prebiotics, those can help. Certain probiotic bacteria and prebiotic fibers can stimulate production of butyrate by promoting the growth of butyrate, butyrate production bacteria. So the growth of butyrate producing bacteria in the gut. So you want to know, and I think I looked this up, which bacteria so we want more of that will help create more butyrate. You also can look at my full script and look at supplementation if you need extra help, especially if you're really low. This helps just supplement what you're not getting enough of until you can heal your gut and then getting your body to make your gut bacteria to make butyrate. So you can supplement butyrate for butyrate Reducing compounds may be beneficial for some. I don't like to out supplement poor lifestyle habits or nutrition. So working on nutrition, proper digestion, nutrient absorption, but there in some cases, people may need to supplement for a few months until we retest. When butyrate levels are low, what are the side effects? What are the clues? What are the symptoms? When they are too low, it can lead to various GI issues and may contribute to conditions as inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and colorectal cancer. Symptoms of low butyrate levels may include increased intestinal permeability, inflammation, and alterations in your microbiome. You don't know what you don't know. So if you don't run these functional lab tests, you may not have any clue and you're not able to correlate all this data together if you don't run a lab. So save your money, do a GI stool test, and then look at your blood chemistry panel. So low levels of butyrate 
can lead to various symptoms and health issues as we continue to repeat in different articles here. So some additional symptoms of low short-chain fatty acid production butyrate levels, what will they include? If you have low levels of butyrate acetate propionate, low level of short-chain fatty acid production, this is important area to look at. If you do my type of health investigation program, as an FDM practitioner, we like to look at three to five labs together and put the missing pieces of the puzzle together. And this is how I got down this rabbit hole. Why do I continue to see low short-chain fatty acid production on people and also a lot of signs and symptoms of leaky gut, inflam chronic inflammation, and inflammatory bowel disease? Why is this happening? Chronic stress. What else? Microbiome. Dysbiosis. But what we're eating, what we're not able to digest and break down. When we're eating in a stressed state, I mean, there's so much to it. So we have to go over how we eat, when, what, how, where, all that. But also your stress levels, not over exercising, under recovery, over training. So increased leaky gut, intestinal permeability. These are these additional symptoms of low chain, low short chain fatty acid production. Butyrate levels may include increased leaky gut. When we have low levels of short chain fatty acids as butyrate. It plays an important role in the gut wall lining, the integrity of the intestinal barrier. But when the levels are low, the gut barrier may become compromised, allowing for harmful substances as toxins, pathogens, and undigested food particles leak through the bloodstream. So you don't know what you don't know. You have no idea this could be a condition called leaky gut that can trigger inflammation, immune responses, contributing to various GI disorders and systematic systemic health issues. Now, here's another problem or challenge. Most doctors, clients go see their doctor, get their annual checkup. They're good. They're normal. Everything sounds good. There's nothing wrong with them. Usually that might not be hundred percent accurate because the lab test results are not updated. They're very old school and they're not looking at inflammation as CRP, for example, in insulin, vitamin D. And the ranges that they do or use also can be not accurate. We wanna be optimal, not normal. So if you're looking at the ranges, it might be five is good up to 500. We want a different range. So that's what I do when I'm doing lab testing. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm just an investigator. So digestive discomfort, low chain, short chain fatty acids, low levels may lead to digestive symptoms as bloating, gas, abdominal discomfort, and irregular bowel movements constipation. Short chain fatty acids help regulate motility and stimulate the secretion of mucus, which lubricates the intestinal lining and facilitates smooth passage of stool. So you don't have problems pooping. You're going to have that mucusy layer as we do in our nose, as my nose is always dripping lately. Allergies. Insufficient short chain fatty acids can disrupt these processes leading to GI discomfort and dysfunction. Inflammation, big one in a lot of people I'm working with. Butyrate specifically can possess anti-inflammatory properties and help regulate immune response in the gut. Low levels of short chain fatty acids can disrupt this balance leading to chronic inflammation in the GI tract. Persistent inflammation may contribute to the development or exasperation exasperation of inflammatory bowel disease as Crohn's and colitis, as well as other inflammatory conditions throughout the body. Persistent F inflammation, we can look at that in C-reactive protein marker. Altered that microbiota composition. Short chain fatty acids play a crucial role in shaping the composition and diversity in your microbiome. 
Again, something you have no idea about unless you run a stool test. They provide energy and substrates for beneficial bacteria while inhibiting the growth of harmful pathogens. Low levels can disrupt this balance leading to dysbiosis, which is, if you don't know, dysbiosis is think that teeter-totter, the right balance, Goldilocks effect. If we have too much of bad guy, we have an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria and we have reduction in the beneficial species. So the good bacteria we have less of, it's, I always think of it as my garden when we moved into our house, it was just a huge mess of overgrowth of succulents. And then once we cleared it out, we found these cute little plants that were hiding underneath and we brought them back to life because we got rid of overgrowth. And then we could bloom and grow, blossom these little guys that were suffocating over the bad guys. So dysbiosis has been associated with various GI disorders, metabolic disorders, autoimmune conditions. All right. Big one, impaired metabolism. Did you know short chain fatty acids as propanate can play a role in regulating energy metabolism, glucose homeostasis. So what if we put in together your insulin, your A1C, go to homo IR marker, look at these other metabolic symptoms, insulin resistance, dyslipidemia and obesity. So these low short chain fatty acids can do so much. Look at all these things, signs and symptoms. Let's review leaky gut. We have increased intestinal permeability, digestive discomfort, inflammation, altered gut microbiota composition, impaired metabolism. So the underlying reasons for low short chain production can be different for everybody. Genetics what you're eating, how your digestion is. So you can be eating all this good food, but maybe you're not breaking it down. Maybe you have H. pylori or not enough stomach acid. You maybe you have a gut dysbiosis, intestinal inflammation, medication use, so you're on antibiotics, killing off everything, and certain medical conditions that can impact your gut wall lining, the GI tract. So addressing the root cause, what we want to look at is more root cause medicine, looking north, working your way south. Don't just treat with a band-aid. Look at why this is happening, how, and each case is going to be unique, which is why I get down these rabbit holes as a health coach and practitioner that I'm curious and I'm trying to see the whole picture and put the missing pieces of the puzzle together Whereas people's doctors or even their concierge medical programs are doing for longevity or just regular concierge health doctors, they're not taking the time to look at it, zoom out before you zoom in. And this is what I'm finding. Addressing the root cause, look at your nutrition, your probiotics. Supplementation might be as our super gut yogurt we're making lifestyle changes, your stress management, your exercise routine, targeted therapies that we need to restore your gut health. So we look at the four or five R protocol, removing, rebuilding, repairing, restoring the health. So several factors that contribute to low short chain fatty acids and butyrate production in the gut may include a diet that's low in fermentable fibers and resistant starches, then you're not giving the food it needs to the bacteria to produce short chain fatty acids as butyrate. If you have a diet high in processed foods, especially athletes, they think they can eat whatever they want. I see this at races and in our tri club, people just eat a diet high in processed foods because they're exercising. They think they have a whole pass to eat whatever they want. Refined carbohydrates, the refined flours and sugars, low fruits and vegetables. I think whole grains is bad. So take out that word because they're not the same in the US. We've gone over that. So antibiotic use obviously is going to impair the microbiome balance, disrupt the balance of the microbiome, leading to reduced diversity, altered functionality of the gut bacteria. Disruption of this gut bacteria can impair, obviously will impair short chain fatty acid production, 
including butyrate, and take time to recover after any antibiotic treatment. I've said this before, but I have heard that if you do one round of antibiotics, you blow up that rainforest, kill everything off. It takes two years, approximately, to rebuild that rainforest, all that tropical plants. So just know antibiotics, if you're on them, there's some strategies you can take to take a good spore-based but probiotic, for example, the other time of the day that you're not taking antibiotic. And then how sometimes you do need to take them if it's, I know I was nearly dying one year on this cough. I was, I thought it was, I couldn't breathe. I was coughing and had some, this infection that I had to, I was like, give me antibiotics now. I can't, I'm not going to make it through the night. And plus I couldn't sleep for an entire week. So sometimes you do need antibiotics, but there's ways we can make it less impactful in your microbiome. All right. So the gut dysbiosis we talked about. Imbalance in the gut microbiome as dysbiosis can affect short-chain fatty acid production. Dysbiosis may result from factors as antibiotic use. We just talked about dietary changes, stress for sure. Chronic stress impacts everything and medical conditions. Dysbiosis can lead to a decrease in beneficial bacteria. So that results in less production of short-chain fatty acid. And that will be, of course, contributing to low fatty acid, short-chain fatty acids as butyrate. Then we talked about intestinal inflammation. Inflammatory conditions is IBD, IBS, celiac, can impair short-chain fatty acid production. So chronic inflammation in the gut can disrupt, may disrupt the growth and functionality of butyrate-producing bacteria leading to decreased levels. We talked about constipation, reduced transit time. That's a big one for a lot of people. Prolonged transit time in the GI tract can reduce the interaction between gut, bacteria, dietary fibers, and this will limit the production of short chain fatty acids. So the transit time reduces the interaction between gut, bacteria, dietary fibers, okay? Constipation, slowed GI motility, lower production. Age, how's age related to all this? Changes in the microbiome. Microbiome composition and function. Older adults may have lower levels of butyrate production bacteria and reduced short-chain fatty acid production. Compared to younger. So when I read that, I think, well, a lot of things happen as we age that we get lower of. So instead of blaming the aging process, what could you do? Change what you're eating or for digestion, maybe take digest enzymes and supplementing with maybe something as butyrate or some other good resistant starches. You're helping feed the microbiome and get the right bacteria levels in your gut that will produce short chain fatty acids that will produce butyrate. Stress management is obviously a big one. Physiological stress can influence gut function and alter combination composition in the gut microbiome. Chronic stress may disrupt short chain fat acid production. This is, can affect motility, leaky gut, and microbiome balance. I've been trying to talk about this for 10 years. And of course, alcohol, alcohol consumption. I think people are starting to finally create more awareness here. Excessive alcohol can negatively impact gut health and alter the gut microbiome composition. Chronic alcohol consumption can reduce short chain fatty acid production and butyrate levels, contributing to GI dysfunction. This is a big one. And I have a lot of clients that come to me and they are drinking every night. Even if you exercise, same thing. Don't sit all day. Have movement throughout the day, even if you do your workout. Don't think you can eat whatever you want. There's part of being fit and healthy from the inside out that we want to talk about and address. And that doesn't mean excessive alcohol consumption, not managing your stress, you know, working on all this stuff if you want to be healthy. So those are some notes I put together. There's lots more short chain fatty acid research on Lyme, PubMed, mechanism, the functional importance of the gut. Really interesting. You can read all about it if you want to go into the links in my show notes on the website post. So microbiome, interesting, PubMed, short chain fatty acids in the human gut and metabolic health evidence is accumulating 
how the important role of gut health and metabolic health. Getting acetate, propanate, butyrate production reduced by the microbiome fermentation of an indigestible carbohydrates. So this is what I think we will hear more. Can you get that from a strict carnivore diet? Do you get the fiber from what the animals you're eating are eating? So that's why I think there's some shift over the years of a strict carnivore to adding in some berries, for example. So another good article you can look at, just summaries here. And then nature.com articles, whoops, one didn't show up, but nature.com had some article on short chain fatty acids, linking diet, the microbiome and immunity. So you can look at the article here, short chain fatty acids, butyrate, propanate, our micro bile metabolites, availability in the gut, determined by environmental factors, blah, blah, blah. So you can go read all this stuff. I put that in the show notes. So there's lots more research coming out. It's pretty interesting information to dial into. There's lots to look at and pictures of how, get my picture out of here. On Frontier, I found this article, potential pathways through which short chain fatty acids influence the gut brain connection. Short chain fatty acids are the main metabolites produced by the microbiota in the large intestine. We just went over all this for a long time. <laughs> so I'll say it again though. The anaerobic fermentation of indigestible polysaccharides such as dietary fiber and resistant starch. Short chain fatty acids might influence gut brain connection and brain function directly or indirectly following the production. Short chain fatty acids are absorbed by colonocytes, hydrogen plus dependent MCTs or sodium dependent SMCTs, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to know all that. But that goes on and on and on. So I'm not going to read all that, but that is on frontiers.org journal, but I thought you might like to look at this picture. So let's wrap it up here, but this is the gut brain connection, which is what I've been diving into too, is, is there a connection of the gut brain and looking at the short chain fatty acids here, microbiome, come down the bottom of this picture, dietary fiber, microbiome creating this propanate butyrate production and how we create these cells. This is your gut wall lining, your immune system, and how that is connected. Liver, pancreas, fat tissue. It's just so crazy when you go down these rabbit holes, systemic circulation, the vagus nerve. So just to lead you into the next episode I'm doing, think about how we're measuring this vagus nerve what we're looking at leaky gut gut inflammation what are we doing heart rate variability so my other rabbit hole we'll finish with summarizing this connection heart rate variability and gut health are you struggling doing all the right things and get desired results as your heart rate variability is still low you want higher the better on your hrv so if we look at this gut health connection, leaky gut, chronic inflammation, how your heart rate variability score may be adjusting if we put this all together. How crazy is that? So we've got the gut, second brain connects with the brain with the vagal nerve. Inflammation associated with gut health since issues leaky gut can directly impact autonomic nervous system and alter HRV. Inflammatory markers that can affect the function of the vagus nerve, key regulatory regulator of parasympathetic branch of ANS and affects your HRV. The microbiome, crucial role, again, regulating inflammation and immune responses throughout the body. Imbalances in the gut microbiome as dysbiosis can lead to chronic inflammation. And we've talked about the research of all disease starts in a leaky gut. So just look at this connection of how the body works as a whole. It's fascinating and how we can test with these functional lab tests. But look at your blood chemistry panel, looking at your heart rate variability scores, your resting heart rate, because we're measuring that stress response. So going back to the gut microbiome, plays a role in regulating, whoops, inflammation, immune response. 
chronic inflammation. How does that relate to chronic inflammation to the impact of your autonomic nervous system? So I just put that all in together. Stress response, vagus nerve. The vagus nerves runs from the brainstem to the abdominal, plays a role in regulating both gut function and HRV. Dysfunction in the vagus nerve, often associated with conditions as leaky gut, chronic inflammation can lead to alterations in HRV. So there's this complex relationship between gut health, because leaky gut, chronic inflammation, HRV, dysregulation in the gut can impact autonomic nervous system, inflammation level, stress response, gut brain access, and all be connected. But as I just talked to Dr. Matt Donson, he's never heard of any research on this. Maybe I'm just putting the missing pieces of the puzzle together, but just connecting the dots. Your nervous system, inflammation, microbiome, stress response, vagus nerve. How's this all connected? Crazy. Then I asked my friend Jody of Vibrant Blue Oils, and she just wrote this article, ironically, how parasympathetic heals leaky gut. So we're going to do a podcast to dive into this connection. And I only see this because when I'm coaching my clients, I'm looking at their Aura, Whoop, Garmin, Apple Watch, whatever they're using, putting it in their training peaks or their chronometer, putting this all together. And I'm seeing these patterns because I have functional lab tests that clients run and then see this pattern. So how parasympathetic nervous system supports gut health, how vagus nerves triggers digestion, gastric motility, stimulates release of digest enzymes, gallbladder, nutrient absorption, tight junction, we're just talking about leaky gut, and how that connection. When we are more sympathetic dominant, eating in a stress mode, you're always on the go, you're living life as a race, you're sympathetic. So the parasympathetic processes are shut off. So Jody and I will go into that. So that was just a summary of all the rabbit holes I've been going down lately, putting them together along with oxidative stress. So if you have questions, let me know, but that's where I'm at today. So read, if you want to need, know more about my health investigation packages, they're six months or longer with a payment plan. So you can learn more what's going on under your hood. So you're not guessing if you're healthy from the inside out. So if you want to thrive as you age, not struggle, let's start taking ownership of your health today and creating your ideal future self now. So we recreate your current self, starting with the microbiome, what you're eating, when, why, how, how you're training, how you're managing your stress, how you're moving throughout the day, how you are working on your gratitude, happiness, joy, doing things that make you laugh. So we want to look at you as a whole individual and not just piecemeal things together. We want to personalize it. So you want to get muscle health. You want to improve gut health. You want to improve mindset. So let me know if you have more questions, head to debbiepotts.net and reach out to me. Have a great day.